Thank you, Brother Borders. Let's remain standing just a moment for prayer while we bow our heads. Now, it's the closing of this five-day campaign, and uh, we are thankful for what the Lord has done. I wonder if there's still requests, which I'm sure there is, be made known by just lifting up your hand and saying, Lord, remember me now. Our Heavenly Father, we are coming again to the close of a meeting, which is always, and especially this one, it brings a, a little sentimental, sorrowful feeling to our heart. For we have come to learn and love one another with godly respects and brotherly love. We thank Thee for all that You have done for us, the mercies that's been granted us. You have did for us the exceedingly abundantly more than we expected, and we're bowing our heads in humility and giving thanks to You. And I pray, Father, that You'll bless every request that was behind those hands. That's all I know to do, is lay my prayer my faith upon the altar with theirs, and ask in the name of the Lord Jesus that you'll grant every request. Now, Father, we pray today that at the closing of the service, and we've seen you save the lost through the week, and we pray now that you'll heal the sick today for us. Grant that there will not be any feeble people among us when the service is over today. May every person be healed. Bless all the efforts and all that's put forth any time and effort. May it be blessed, Father. We commit all the results to you and trust to meet again somewhere this side of the river. If not, we know we'll meet over there. Until then, keep us healthy, happy in the service of God. In the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, amen. You be seated. I just know, or hardly know, rather, where to start and what to say. I will first say that I will always have a great respect for a brother that called me to come to this valley. And that's Brother Fred Friedmeier. I think is a friend to, to Brother Harold. And a little Oregon Bright family. Mrs. Oregon Bright was here last night. A little mom and papa Oregon Bright. Mrs. Oregon Bright's people, I don't know what her name was before she was married, but they were the early settlers that come in here in old wagons and ox and so forth and settle up right here in Grass Valley. Here's where she's always dreamed of. They followed me in the meetings. Brother Oregon Wright and I have missionaried almost the world over. He stood with me in great battles when I've seen as many as 20 or 30 witch doctors come and challenge and sit on both sides and call a storm right into existence. You think they can't do it? You just haven't been a missionary, that's all. <laughs> they can do it. But I've seen the power of Almighty God break that storm right in the middle and peel one place back at the other like that and see 30,000 swarm to the altar at one time and receive Christ. Praise the Lord. It's really something to be on the mission fields. I want to, if Mrs. Argenbright is here again this afternoon, God ever bless her and Papa Argenbright. I didn't get this, to see her to shake her hand no more than back to the building. They have been really Papa and Mama to me. Brother Argenbright's overseas at the time I'm to meet him. Right away we're going to Anchorage, Alaska to establish a Christian businessman's Full Gospel Businessmen's Chapter. I speak for this group worldwide. I'm going into Africa to organize some some chapters down there. I want to thank them. And Ms. Argon Wright, if you're present, no wonder you were so happy for this little valley. Or I guess it's the valley, it's called Grass Valley. I've heard her talk about so many fine people. I met them. And I want to say to the people that's with me, my group around here and the people that's visiting come here with me. This no doubt is our queen meeting of the 11 meetings I've had scheduled. This is my seventh one. 
And this is the queen meeting, I believe, of all that have had. I haven't dealt at all this week on sick people. I've just stayed with the word. And it's been such a thing as you can feel where people take the word or not. My wife, in the meeting, she said back here last night, when I went home, she said to me, she said, Bill, uh, she's a very smart girl, very fine discernment, you know, natural discernment. I don't mean she has a spiritual discernment. It's just, she said, those people believe you. Those people love you. She said, you could have a real meeting there. She said, everyone watched every word you said and hung right on to it and said, you could just see the expression on their face when they looked. They believed it. I said, honey, that's the first night when I walked in there. I perceived that. Long as I live, I'll never forget this little visit at Grass Valley. I have been in bigger places, of course, bigger crowds, but never any sweeter bunch of people that I ever preached to than here at Grass Valley. And I want to thank the people. They tell me that the, all the money was taken up to pay for the meeting a night or two ago, and last night they give a missionary offering to me. And today they said they give a love offering to me. Now, it wasn't necessary. I didn't come for that. I've never in my life ever taken an offering. I get a salary from my church of $100 a week. What money is sent in, we hold it and put it in missions, all of it. Then when we get enough to leave, to go in the mission fields, then I go. Therefore, we're not one bit of burden. I was talking to Brother Harold. He asked me to come over to a car. He believes this ministry would be effective there. It's more effective overseas than it is here. Them people, they want it. They got to see something. And so I'm waiting for that great time when I will go to Israel someday to bring the gospel to them. I was right close to it recently, had my ticket already bought, and I was at, I was in Egypt, and a half hour I'd been in, over there, and the Holy Spirit just as deaf as you hear my voice said, this is not the hour for the Jew yet. Israel will be saved as a nation, the whole nation will come at once. God deals with Israel as a nation, we all know that, yeah. not as an individual, a nation. And he wouldn't let me go. Remember. How many of you ever heard of Louis Petrus? Many of you in the Stockholm Church. He sent a million Bibles down there. You've seen the Life magazine where there's bringing up those Jews from down in Iran and so forth. And they never had known what, uh, they're still plowing with old wooden instruments and things. And it showed the picture of ships. I've got it. Uh, called Three Minutes to Midnight. And, uh, and what we took the pictures of them coming in, packing their loved ones on their back. They're old. And they said, they interviewed them, them Jews. They said, are you coming to the homeland to die? He said, we're coming to see the Messiah. Hallelujah. When the fig tree puts forth its buds, Amen. that generation was seen. This does something to me. They're looking for a Messiah. Brother Petrus gave them these little New Testaments. A Jewish Bible reads in the back to the front, you know. And so they was reading it. And when they did it, they said, if this, they never heard nothing about Jesus. They'd been in there for 2,000 years. And they wouldn't even get on those planes. And they didn't know it looked like a bird to them. They never know nothing about it. So the priest stood out, the rabbi rather, and he stood out and said, Listen, our prophet told us that we'd be carried back to the homeland on the wings of an eagle. You see how close we are, friend? We're at the door. Remember, when the gospel goes to the Jew, the Gentile is finished. The door is closed. See how close it is? And then they come got on the plane when our rabbi told us that when our, we will turn back to the homeland. The prophet told him, they always be their prophets. And the prophet said, we would return on the wings of an eagle. There it was, that bird, the airplane. They got off and it says, looking for a messiah. They wasn't looking for the homeland, they was looking to see the Messiah. When the Jew goes looking for that, something's at hand. They read this book, and they said, we believe our prophets, and we know Messiah is going to be a prophet when he comes. Said, if this be the Messiah, and then he's a living, let us see him do the sign of the prophet, we'll believe him. Amen. <laughs> what a perfect, what a perfect thing. I like to call five or six hundred of them together. Do you mean that? Let's see whether he's alive or not. Yeah. Yeah. 
right on the grounds where your fathers rejected him, now receive him. The Gentiles finish then. Get in quickly, stay in right quick. Not, don't mean to get sentimental, but I, I know we're at the end. I, just something inside of me tells me that something's fixing to happen, it just can't go on. We're just here, everything's done, taking place. I don't know when, might be today yet, it might be next week, it may be five years, maybe ten years, I don't know. But it just seems to be it's all close. I'm looking for it. We can't live much longer like this. We know we can't. So I love you for listening to the word. God bless you. I'll ever pray for you. I want to ask you a favor. That is when I'm fixing to go overseas now. When the nights are dark, witch doctors on every side, cloudy and heavy, you pray for me, won't you? I'll be remembering it. I want to thank the people from this auditorium. This is a nice, beautiful place. So seated, so nice, and everything so nice. I don't know who it is, whether it's a, the officer a day or whatever it takes place, or a committed, committed, a committee of them, whatever it is. I want to thank them for this nice building. I want to thank each one of you for your cooperation. I want to thank you for the offering. I'll do the very best by the grace of God to see it goes to the kingdom of God, to do for the kingdom. You put, you put part of your living in there. I know it. And I, I love you. And many times when I have to shake the things that I do, it's because of love. Love corrective. Love always. You've seen your little child out there in the street, you wouldn't say, poor little fella, just let him alone. You get him in out of the street and correct him because he get killed. I don't want you to miss it, friends. I want you to stay right with it. Then I want to thank my brethren. Stand up here a minute. Will you, brethren? Let's come here a minute, just a minute. Thrills my heart. Where all things work together for good to them that love God. Over Sedalia, where I was wanted to go so bad, I had so many letters in there. Brother Borders, when he got down there, he said, somehow or another, they kind of turned me down. And on account of something I'd said on a tape, some doctoring, they didn't care for it. So that was all right. That's every fellow, you know. But they didn't know what they were doing. If they would have took it, I couldn't have come to Grass Valley. The reason they turned it down, they didn't know it. It was God bringing me to Grass Valley. Here we stand this afternoon. I got four cooperating ministers here. One of them is the Assembly of God, which is a great church, a great group of people. They've helped sponsor me world over. The next is Church of God, another great group of Pentecostal people, helped sponsor me world over. The next is the United or the Pentecostal Oneness, another fine group of people helped sponsor me world over just left Los Angeles where 40 some odd churches of greater Los Angeles of the United Pentecostal Church sponsored the meeting at the Cow Palace or we call it Cow Palace great stock exhibit one of them is interdenominational you know what I want to tell you something it's many of the organizations of these men there's been the times it's turned me down on things that I've said but these men I understand that they've been bringing the groups together and praying. That's what done it. Look, we're human beings. The four of us standing here this afternoon in unity and brotherhood. I don't know where I'd ever stand with anything better this side of heaven. I mean that. I'm not saying that just to be acting out. I've got other things I can be saying. I mean that. It just goes to show what you can do when you put your heart together. Now, them great organizations are wonderful. They're fine. They got fine men in all of them. I preach for all of them and know it's, it's the truth. How I could remember the assemblies of God, how they come to my rescue at many times. How I remember the church of God up there in Tennessee when I went up there and rented a big auditorium and come to find out some brother wrote me and a 
They had one little church in the bottom, and that great big Lee College come together. They packed 6,000 out the second night, and the mayor of the town and them couldn't even get in. I'll never forget it. How many times the little one in this church has stood by me in the mission fields and everywhere else. The interdenominational, wherever they are, they're real man of God in those places. Now, that's the reason God deals with individuals. Never did he deal with groups. See, in the time of, Mo, of the Antiluvian destruction, he had Noah. In the time of calling out of Israel, he had Moses. Coming of Christ, John the Baptist. In the days of Christ, Jesus. In the days of Luther, Luther. In the days of Wesley, Wesley. See, it's just an individual. It's correctly. Man of God, who God has dealt with. And now, in the differences, I might say this. The same man who brings our groups together and pray one. Brother, don't never let that stop. Just keep that going, whatever you do. It's all. Now, when we start across the country, I'm a lover of a Ford. I like a Ford. My boy loves a Chevrolet just the same. He's just as much for the Chevy as I am for the Ford. Well, he tells me your rattle trap Ford will not make it. I said, your old junker Chevy won't. But you know what? He remained my son. I remained his daddy. We stayed in our car and we both got here because we was looking to something greater than a Ford or a Chevy. You know what I mean? When I go to buy ice cream for my children, one of them will say vanilla, the other will say chocolate, the other will say strawberry, the other will say orange. When I come back, I got a rainbow color. So many differences. That's only in taste. It's all ice cream. And in a, here it stands today. We're all born of the same spirit. Denominations only taste. It's all ice cream. It's all spirit of God. You know what? A rainbow makes a covenant. Let's stay this way, brethren. God bless you. Let's stay. A rainbow covenant. God, God doesn't dwell in a Sears and Roebuck Harmony house anyhow. God is a God of variety. Do you know that? Why does he make red flowers, blue flowers, pink flowers, all different kinds of flowers? Why did he just make them all white or all red? Why did he make big mountains, little mountains, palm trees, oak trees? Why did he do it? Because he likes variety. You know what I mean? He likes variety. Why did he make the mountain, then the plain, the real dry desert? Then the wet sea. He's a God of variety. But he wants it all to harmonize. That's why he made me with ears, nose, mouth. You the same way. It all harmonizes for one body. That's the way we can do. Harmonize. And our different opinions, we still harmonize because we are, the taste has nothing to do with it. We are God's people. All marching together with one great purpose to win souls for Christ. May it ever be that way. May this great bouquet of God's gathering together here be an everlasting bouquet until he comes to take us home. My sincere desire is that. Now, today we have placed a time for healing, praying for the sick. I've had such a glorious time meeting the people on the street, hearing them, setting the Holy Spirit leading me to places. This morning I went in to eat breakfast. There sat a man sitting there. He may be sitting right here now. There he was sitting there, a minister from up around Tennessee. He had a big plate full of fried potatoes and ham and eggs. He just started screaming and said, Brother Brown, before I met you, I couldn't do this. I had an altered stomach. He said, I eat what I want to by the grace of God. Another and said, I... Didn't have any children barren. I've got five boys. <laughs> there you are. See, it's just the grace of God. That's what it is. See, shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. God ever bless you. Thank you so much. Thank the ushers to everything that's been done. God bless you. And I hope to get back with you again. Until I get to come, pray one with another, one for another, and include me in your prayers if you do that. God bless you. Now let's bow our heads now for just a word before we start a little text for the healing service. Gracious Heavenly Father, it's such a great thing to meet your children. 
I remember one time standing on the street. Nobody would talk to me. From the family life, poor, bad name. Some man talking, then somebody else come up, walked away, and left me standing there. And now people over the world. No wonder you said, "He that will forsake all, I'll give him fathers, mothers, sisters, and brothers." In this world, all these things, and eternal life in the world to come. How we thank thee. Pray, Heavenly Father, now that grace and mercy will rest upon us as we trust Thee and serve Thee in our day. Be with us now. Bless everything that's done. Bless these people. Oh, God, I don't know how. They, if I found grace in Your sight, answer every request for them. May there be no feeble among them. May they be healed. Bless these pastors. Bless their churches. Oh God, I pray that these converts this week will find a, a, a home in some of these good churches here. Let them know that they are the man who stood here on the platform and has backed up and prayed for me and stood behind me. God, if I lived here, I would have belonged to one of them myself. I pray that you will bless them. May there be an old-fashioned revival break out in every one of their churches that will just start the fireballs of God rolling across the country. Grant it, Lord. Heal the sick in their meeting. Save the lost. Fill with the Holy Ghost. And keep it going, Father, until you send Jesus. Grant it. For we ask it in his name and for his glory. Amen. Now to the young converts that you have been converted during time of this meeting. And we've tried to do everything we could to help. Now, we want you to find one of these churches of your choice, which one you desire to go to, and there go and be baptized and be filled with the Holy Ghost and stay as long as you live. Make a real good worker in one of these fine churches. They believe the message that I have preached or they wouldn't have had me here or be here to back me up in prayer. They turn their congregations loose. Therefore, they're shepherds. I wouldn't say one thing to hurt because I would be a destroyer of sheep. I don't want to do that. I want to help sheep, feed sheep food. That's the reason I try to stay right with the Word. Now, I want to speak for just a little while. And I wonder, is my voice coming all right up in the balcony? Can you hear me? I thought I noticed the people moving around. Ever who is, a, maybe I got this in transposition. Uh, is this one? No. This one? Is that better? This one? That's still better? All right. I'll take this one here and speak from this. Now, let's settle down now and excuse my mental, sentimental feeling. I was going to say melancholy. I can't help it. About time I start to meet somebody and get to love them, get acquainted with one another, and we have to say bye bye. See you again someday. I hate to do that. But I want to tell you someday we're going to meet where we're not going to say goodbye no more. That's right. Just beyond the river. And oh, I got so many things I'd like to tell you about it, of experiences. Wish I had three or four weeks just to stay here. And, but maybe the Lord willing, I can come back sometime and we'll continue on. Now, just to continue the reason of me Speaking on Abraham, I, I just couldn't get him up the top of the mountain. I had so many things to tell about him down here and where he's having his journey. And I did that to build faith in you, let you know that you are heirs with him. You are, you are Abraham's seed when you are dead in Christ, you're Abraham's seed and heirs with him according to the promise. Think of it. How many in here is born again Christians? Raise your hands. It's like a hundred percent. Then you are the seed of Abraham and are heirs with him. You are heirs. Everything that he did for Abraham, he's promised to do for you. And the word here is his promise. So just hold on to it now. And let's read some of it. I want to read out of the book of Isaiah. For a little text, together a context, 
Isaiah, the seventh chapter, 14th verse. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, from there, I would like to draw a text of this, a super sign. We are living in a, a day of everything must be super. It don't sell. It's got to be super. It's just a super day. We ever, the old corner grocery is about gone, where we used to go down on Saturday night and pay the grocery bill and, and the little corner store. Why? The big supermarket. Run it out. I'll visit one of your supermarkets. I, I have a little story to tell you about it. Uh, this water here, it's good water, it's good and cold, but it kind of made all of us sick, changing water. So the kiddies got sick and my wife, we went out to the supermarket here to see if they had some water. And the lady pointed over on the shelf and we went over there and it looked like beer in cans. I went back and I said, is that water? She said, read it. So it was water. I got a case of those cans. I felt about that big coming out, packing those cans. I thought, what are some Christians see me packing these? <laughs> Would I ever be able to explain that it was water? <laughs> So then when I got down to my motel, the lady was a Christian that runs the place, very fine people. And um, she said, well, my husband said he was very thankful we had no beer cans to pack out this week. I said, lady, did you notice the water cans? <laughs> I wanted to be sure that she noticed it was water. <laughs> and and uh, walking around with uh, this bunch of cans in my hand, you know, but it's canned water. Now... So uh, the supermarkets, the big places, they have things that the little corner store didn't pack. It's supermarket. And then my old Model A, it's out of date anymore. Uh, 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 my Ford, that uh, Billy Difference with me, coming out here, by the way, his radiator and his new Chevy ball all the way out here, and my brakes burn up in my Ford. So you see, it took God to get us out here anyhow. So that's what we have. It's just two opinion. They both brought us here because we trusted in God and not the Chevy or the Ford. So, but now my first one I had was a Model T. I've had a Ford ever since. I always claimed the thing would do 30 miles an hour. It was very much doubted, but I had, I would go 15 miles an hour this way and 15 miles an hour this way, you know. So between it, I got 30 miles an hour. But now they got a super. Ma, it's really whizzes you over the ground. We couldn't sell the old T model no more because it's a day of super. Everything's got to be super. And now they've even got super jets, super highways. While these cars that we got today couldn't run uh, uh, over these uh, highways we used to have. My first trip west. It taken me 16 days to go from Jeffersonville to Phoenix, Arizona, 1,800 miles. But my, the most of it is 19 and 26. They had nothing but just old rock roads. I was a little boy sitting up holding this spool top forward. I thought I was making good time. It would take a horse two or three months to do it. Well, if my daddy would have come. But you see, now what happened all at once? 6,000 years has been the same man, but right here in the last 50 years, He's come from a horse and buggy to a jet or rocket. Why? The Bible said they would run to and fro in these last days and knowledge shall increase. It's a sign of the end time. Super. Everything must be super. It won't work. Even they want super people. We even they tell me they got a television cast they call Superman. Always something super. Two or three of them's committed suicide or something. Trying to work that mental mind up. Brother, we at the age of insanity that everything's become so super. We're just human beings. 
And they want a super race. Hitler said that Germany was the super race. Stalin said that that Russians was a super race. Something wrong somewhere. They're all made off of one tree. So the Bible said that God by one man, one blood made all nations. One man, Adam. From that Adam come all races. Black, white, brown, yellow, red, whatever it is, God brought it from that one blood. Each one of us can give each other a blood transfusion. The country we was raised in and turned our skins different colors, it's still the same man. And I've noticed as a missionary, no doubt brother could say the same. I've been in the hot and tots, the word they didn't even wish was right and left hand. But let them receive the Holy Ghost, they do the same thing you do when you get the Holy Ghost. Right. Act the same way. Speak in unknown tongues. Do just the same things that you do with the Holy Ghost. Sure. And they really are on fire. Now, all these super, super, now they're leaving the earth, going up into orbits and astronauts and so forth. They got everything so super. What does this speaking of? All this of a sign of oncoming darkness. That's right. Man has always tried to make himself an achievement by his own knowledge. That's been his, that's been his motto all the time of trying to achieve something by his own knowledge. It started out in the beginning at the Garden of Eden. Adam, as soon as he fell from grace, he tried to achieve something. He tried to achieve a super church. That is a way of redemption without atonement. He tried to achieve a church his way back into the garden without an atonement. And he's tried the same thing all along. The fallen Adam today tries the same thing to achieve a super church. Some great intellectual, some great uh, eye catcher and the beauty. Now, if we only realize that there's only one way back, and that is the way that God first recommended the blood. Cain, he built a church, made a sacrifice, gave an offering, sincere, and prayed. And if God condemned him and received Abel upon the same basis, God did wrong if he did that. But Cain come his own way and Abel come God's provided way. The revelation that it wasn't fruit as some people think today that drove Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. Uh, This is a, a remark. I say it just not to make a bad remark, but just to make a point, not a joke. But I've always said that people believe, that's why I was turned down that other meeting, that that it was apples or something that Eve eat that caused uh, the, the fall. If eating apples caused women to realize they're naked, we had better pass the apples again. That's exactly right. Yes, sir. It wasn't apples. Don't you never let anybody poke that down your throat. Why did she realize she was naked? Absolutely. Why did life come by that, that perverted life? God, the great contractor, had all the bodies laid out here on the earth. Of calcium, potash, petroleum. He was going to create it and make it. But she, she bypassed the way of God. Yes, sir. What did Adam do when he come to his wife? When he come to, he found her pregnant. Just exactly of an evil or own exception, conception, had received foul seed. Jehovah, before he could marry his wife, did the same thing. And Jesus, before he could get to his bride, she had organized herself and become the Roman Catholic Church. Same thing. But he will have a bride. Don't you worry. That'll be bought with his word. Just exactly what he told Eve to stay with. He'll have a church. Amen. That'll be bought by his word. Now, we find out all this trying to achieve something great. Make some kind of a, a great memorial to their own name. Something super. Nimrod one time. He wanted to achieve a way to go to heaven without any atonement. So he built a super tower. 
There's many towers, but he tried to build a super tower. What happened to it? It fell. Along come Nebuchadnezzar. He built a super city. Thought he could build these big walls up, wall wide enough you could run a chariot race around him. And the great iron gates and the things that he built put the river right through the middle. A type of heaven. Swinging gardens and he's thrown right by the river like the river, river Euphrates and like the river of life in the garden of Eden and the river of life in the kingdom of God. And what happened? It fell because it could not stand. Our own nation as a sister to England always was jealous of her navy. So we tried to build a ship one time. That would, could not be sunk, called the Titanic, but she went down just the same. And the song that the poet wrote, God with his mighty hand shows this world it cannot stand. Amen. Right. France built what they call the Siegfried Line. And they put their guns all out there, got back here, women, wine, whatever more, living sin. And if Germany ever marched on them, they would shoot them right down because they had the Siegfried line built, fortified in concrete. What happened? The Germans marched right behind it and blowed them out of it. Yeah. Wouldn't work. Germany tried. They made them a Magdal line. Got down in the earth so deep, fortified in concrete and things. What did the Americans do? Sent in the blockbuster and blowed them right out of it. Man's trying to achieve something, make a sign of his own work, trying to do something. Churches today are trying to get more members into them, make their organization greater. Instead of accepting the revelations of God, they pull off and make a sectarian thing out of it. That's what's the trouble. Any organization, I am not against my brethren in organization. I love my brethren. But when an organization writes up their documents and signs it with a period, if they'd sign it with a comma, it would be all right. If you say, I believe this plus all that God will add to us. Amen. That's good. But when you say we believe this and this is it and we won't, don't want nothing else into it, then you log God right out of the picture when you do that. Right. Oh, super denomination. They've tried to educate people. Education is a good thing, but it'll never take the place of salvation. It cannot. God's program is not education, civilization, but salvation. But man has tried to make a super church. The world's trying to make a super nation with the bombs and so forth. What do they do till they got themselves in such a place that they're afraid of one another? One touch. You don't take a whole army anymore. The little nations anywhere. They can make a touch. And what it is, the whole world will be blown up in a second. You don't have to have some great nation like Russia. While a little bitty place, an island somewhere can do the same work. And they're standing there, radar posts, great missiles by the thousands, setting ready with atomic and hydrogen weapons that could fly in. Russia could touch one trigger this afternoon and this whole United States would sink beneath the earth. And the United States could touch one trigger and sink Russia beneath the earth. That's right. I've heard the man, the scientist is in the field. That's got so scared they've come out seeking God and found the Holy Ghost. They don't know what to do. Oh, I tell you, you can't dig down to get away from it. We got a shelter, oh. It's not made out of steel. It's made out of feathers under his wings where we rest waiting. When the bomb flies, don't worry about that. We'll be flying too, right up to meet him in the air. Caught up to meet him in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. So, you see, the great super things, it's got scare one to another. It's got to a place that we try to build a super church. Now, you know that I was ordained in a missionary Baptist church. And the Baptist people in 1944 made a slogan. We want a million more in 44. I went to a rally when this happened, a Sunday school rally, and they had to dismiss the church so the pastors could go outside and smoke. Right. And then women sitting in there half naked 
and things like that. Just because all the thing they had to do was put their name on a book. I've got great respects for Baptist, Presbyterian, or anything that names the name of Jesus Christ. But what I mean, we got to get back to God's way of doing it. Not so much we trying to, they won't, the Baptist wants to be the biggest group. The Presbyterian wants to be the biggest group. The Pentecostal, the oneness wants to be the biggest group. The assemblies wants to be the biggest group. The rest of them wants to be the biggest group. Let's get that out of our head. Amen. There's only one group, and that's the blood-washed saints of the living God that's been predestinated since the foundation of the world. And no seed, I don't care what it is, if it's not germatized, it will not come up. I don't care how many times you join church, how many denominations you belong to, unless that life of yours is germatized by the Holy Spirit, you'll never go in the rapture, you'll never raise from that place that you go beneath the grave. Right? Yeah. Super church. Super denominations. Everything super. What has it always done? Everything that man put his hands on has failed. I begin to feel religious. <laughs> Why? He's a failure to start with. And everything that he's tried to achieve has failed. Got the day of the greatest medicines we ever had. And yet it kills about as many as it cures. That's right. We got the day of, of everything. It seems to be greater, but look what it's doing. It's knocking the life out of the people. I stood in Africa and watched the malaria mosquitoes just for the piles up on a native's leg. Wouldn't hurt him. Let one touch me, I'd be so full of all kinds of of things that shot my arms to go over there, I'd take malaria the first time one passed by me. <laughs> See, it tears down the system. Yeah. It might help here where it hinders here. It weakens us all the time. And look what we got today. A bunch of, I hate to say this, this sounds sacrilegious, but almost a bunch of educated idiots. Yeah. Right. I say as a missionary, it's a lot better to to deal with an uneducated heathen and it is to deal with an educated heathen. The heathen is unbeliever. That's exactly right. Oh, it's such a terrific thing of this day that we live. How horrible. Now, notice again. A super. All these things. Hitler tried to make a super race. Pharaoh tried to make a super race. I stood in Egypt to try to see the, the thrones where Pharaoh sat. You'd dig 20 feet beneath the earth to find their thrones. I stood in Rome where the Caesars, it's all, you can't even find the place unless you dig way down to sunken walls and so forth where the Caesars was. Why? It shows that anything that man does is corruptible. Amen. What is it all? All those things that fell to history and dust. What makes a man want to do that? What does that is because there's something behind it. And he tries to take his own way instead of taking God's way of it. That's the reason to try to build super denominations. That's the reason to try to build super transportation, super cities and so forth. It's because that there's something back there. That's what makes a man want to carry on and get drunk. Why does he do it? Why does a woman want to strip herself off? Listen, sisters, this has become a nudist camp almost. Don't you let that spirit get on you. Amen. It's a spirit. Believe me, as a servant of Christ, it's a devil. Keep it off of you. Pray the blood of Christ keep it away from you. I don't care what church you belong to. That means nothing to me or nothing to God. The thing it is, is are you right with God? Then the whole, you don't have to pick, I live in a country where they have oak trees, scrub oak. And in springtime, the winter times pass by, and there's all the old dead leaves hanging on the oak tree. Now how are we going to get some new leaves? You don't have to go out and pick off the old leaf. Just let the new life come in, the old leaf drops off. And that's the way it is with Christ. When Christ comes in, the world drops out automatically. 
When people say that they're born of the Spirit of God and still love the things of the world, the Bible said, if you love the world, the things of the world, the love of God's not even in you. How can we do those things? We're trying to build super things. Now, it's all rotten. It's all dust. It'll all return to the dust. So man desires to see a super sign. And God said, one time, I'm going to give them a super sign. I'm going to give them people a super sign. The Jews want signs. Everybody wants signs. And they want signs. The world today wants signs. They're trying to make their own signs. But God give them a sign. Amen. Right. The zigzag lightning on a black stormy night shows that there can be light in the time of darkness. Amen. Yeah. Right. God said, I'm going to give them a sign. A virgin shall conceive. <laughs> How humble he made it. This is a super sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a child, a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. There is a super sign. How striking it ought to be that God himself would become a baby. How that God so loved the world. That's one of the greatest scriptures there is. How that the love of God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The very dust that he created on the earth, he become that dust. How striking it ought to be. God, Emmanuel, changing his cast from God to a man, stretching his tent from the stars of heaven to live here on earth. But filthy creatures as we are. The love of God. How that he would do it. How striking it ought to be to the sinner to know that little Jehovah crying in a mother's arms. Little Jehovah not come in the polish of an angel. He come as Abraham's seed. He come as a man. He never come down the golden quarters of heaven. If it would, it would be for the rich. But he was born in a manger. So poor he had to bar a womb to be born in. And when he left, he had to bar a grave to be buried in. Jehovah Emmanuel. A super sign. Amen. God sent prophets. He sent signs. He sent everything. But said, I'll give you the super sign now. The great sign. Me, myself, I'm coming down to dwell among you. Be called Emmanuel. It ought to strike the people. Himself made flesh and dwelt among us. Born in a dirty, stinking stable. Little Jehovah. Not laying in a pink basket in a hospital room, but in a stinking manger over a manure pile in a barn. Emmanuel, the creator of heavens and earth, with swaddling cloth on. Hallelujah. Little Jehovah playing as a kid. Jehovah as a teenager. Jehovah as a carpenter. It ought to be striking, but it's so dull, the world misses it a million miles. A woman not long ago, I was preaching on the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. And she said, Mr. Branham, I appreciate your preaching. But said, there's one thing you do that I certainly don't agree with you. And I said, what is it, sister? If there's just one thing, I'm thankful to meet you. And I said, because usually it's about a hundred things. And he, she said, well, there's one thing outstanding. Of course, she belonged to a church that don't believe in the deity of Christ. Just like when I see today, when they go to push him back and just make a profit out of him. Oh, my. She said, you brag too much about Jesus. You make him divine. I said, he was divine. Why, she said, he, he couldn't be divine. I said, well, he was divine. She said, well, he can't be. I'll prove to you by your own Bible that he's not divine. I said, I'd like to see you do it. And she said, all right. Take your Bible and turn to St. John, the 11th chapter. I said, all right, I know just what you're going to say, because I'm practically over my heart. And she said, Jesus, on his road down to raise Lazarus out of the grave, the Bible said he wept. 
Well, I said, sure. And she said, well, now, how could he be divine and weep? I said, that was the man part weeping. Yeah. Right. You yeah. failed to see that he was Emmanuel. He was both man and God. Amen. I said, he was a man going to the grave weeping. But when he pulled him little shoulders together and said, Lazarus, come forth. And a man had been dead four days and stinking, come forth and lived again. That took more than a man. Right. He was a man when he came off the mountain that night hungry, looking on a tree to find something to eat. But when he took five biscuits and two fish and fed 5,000, that was more than a man. That was the Creator Jehovah. Right. He was a man when he's laying on that ship that night. And the 10,000 devils of the sea swore they drowned him, bouncing out there like a bottle stopper. When the waves come up, he was so tired from preaching till he couldn't even move, didn't even wake him up. But when once he was aroused, oh, hallelujah, amen. went forth and put his foot up on the rail of the boat, looked up and said, peace, be still. That was more than a man. That was God who could still the waves of the sea. Hallelujah. It was a man that cried for mercy at the cross. My God, why has thou forsaken me? But on Easter morning, when he broke the seals of death, hell in the grave, and rose up again and said, I'm he that was dead and alive forevermore. That was more than a man. That was God in his son. Amen. Every man that's ever mounted to a hill of beans believed that. Every poet that's that's thrilled every heart that's ever uh, done anything. Eddie Pruitt. Wrote the inauguration song, his songs wouldn't sell. One day the Spirit grabbed a hold of him, he tucked a quill in his hand. He wrote uh, with the Spirit, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate Paul, bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Amen. Amen. Old blind Fanny Crosby, one night she was asked why she wouldn't write worldly songs. She said, I'm a Christian. How much different she is from Elvis Presley. They said, well, the man made fun of her. Said, there is no such a thing. Said, what do you mean? If you won't open your eyes. She said, God has chose my lot. And she said, well, how will you ever know if you die and there is such a place you can't see him? She said, I'll have my sight over there. Well, said, what if you haven't got your sight? She said, I'll know him anyhow. Said, how do you think you know him? Said, I'll feel the nail prints in his hand. Amen. Then she turned and she inspiration struck her and she sang, I shall know, yes, I shall know him. And redeemed by his side I shall stand. I shall know him by the nail prints in his hand. Ah, she wrote, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others are calling, do not pass me by. For thou the stream of all my comfort, more than life to me. Whom have I on earth beside thee, or whom in heaven but thee? Amen. Sure, anybody that ever mounted anything believed him to be Emmanuel. He's more than a prophet. He was a prophet, but he's a God prophet. Yes. Emmanuel, God in flesh. He never come with a slew to heaven. He never come as an angel. He come as Abraham's seed to show the last day super sign of God. Oh, yes. To make a super seed, a super race, the race that had been promised, Abraham's race. To bring forth a super seed that we've been talking about. A super Christ. What did they do to him when he come on earth? They made fun of him. They called the spirit that was working in him where he could discern spirits and so forth. They said, it's the devil. He's Beelzebub, a fortune teller. And in the physical part. The body part. They hung it on a tree and put him to death. But he was a superstar. Yes. He rose up again on the third day. Yes. For he trusted the word of God. David said under inspiration, I'll not leave his soul in hell, neither will I suffer my holy one to see corruption. Therefore, Jesus knew that the scripture spoke of him, that he would not see corruption. Corruption sets in in 72 hours on a dead body. We know that, and he knows sometime between that, he had raised from the dead. And he rose up from the dead, for he was a super sign. The prophets were signs, sure, but they died and went into the grave. But Jesus was a super sign. He come out of the grave. Amen. 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 Super race. 
Yes, sir. A super Christ. After 2,000 years now. 2,000 years. With all the critics and everything else, he still remains the same today. I'll give you a super sign. A great sign. The people want something super, so the church got something super. Not just a handshake, not just a a formal baptism, but a baptism of the Holy Ghost. Not just an actual dry-eyed confession, but a spirit of Christ living in them. Bringing their very life up to a place that serves Christ and live with Christ. Now the Bible said last night where we left off. Abraham told Abraham at Genesis 22nd chapter 16th and 17th verse. He said, thy seed shall possess the gate of its enemy. Your seed, Abraham, will possess the gate of the enemy. When Rebekah had been chose for Isaac the son, it was also said the same to her. When Eliezer, a type of the Holy Spirit, that come to find the bride, he found her in the cool of the evening. Get what it is? This day, last day, last part of the day, when the evening lights are shining. He found her. And notice, he had to deal with two different people. She had a family. But the only one that Eliezer had to deal with was her mother and her brother. But he was after that bride. So as Abraham told him, go hunt a bride from among my people. Don't you take one of these aliens for his bride. And he said, now what if the woman won't come with me? He said, then if she won't come, then you're free from your oath. And he put his hand on his hip and swore by it. Notice, Eliezer found the woman. He knew that was her. I notice he had to deal with two people, her mother and the brother. The father and the rest of them had nothing to say, mother and brother. So has the messenger, the Holy Ghost of God in this last days, picking out the bride. He's had to deal with the church that calls itself the mother, the Catholic, and the brother, the preacher. Exactly. He had to deal with those two. There's one that kicked up a fuss about it. But now he said, you've got to make your choice. (laughs) Will you go? And look quickly. As soon as she heard about Isaac, before she ever saw him, she said, I will go. Why? She was a blood relative to him. See, that was Abraham's brother's child. Isaac and Rebekah were first cousins. Blood relations. Showing that the church in the last days will be blood relation to Christ. For the very God that predestinated the Christ, who was a lamb slain before the foundation of the earth, the church itself, its name was put on the book before the foundation of the world. And Rebecca, as soon as she heard of Isaac, there was something in her that pulled her straight to him, though she hadn't seen him or nothing. She yet wanted to go by her own choice. Away from mother or brother. And today, if that light of God, that Holy Spirit, ever strikes a a predestinated seed whose name was put on the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. The Bible says that. It's right. The light will shine. You can preach to some. And it seems like it's just like water on a duck's back. Falls off. But let it once strike that seed and watch what happens quickly. Something there right now. Why? It's predestinated seed coming forth. It's got to come. And when that light, the gospel strikes it, they get it. The rest of them will get up and walk away. It's not for them. The Bible said that man were foreordained to condemnation. Book of Jude. All scriptures by inspiration. Now when that light struck Little Rebecca, she knew something within her and that brought her to Isaac. She veiled her face. She wanted no more to do with her own thinking. Isaac was her thinking from then on. And the church itself, when it strikes that power of God, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, out of the denominational churches, out of the Catholic church, wherever it is, when that baptism of the Holy Ghost is made real to people, them is predestinated like you people here, the eternal life sees it and walks in it. Amen. What is it? A super sign. And the enemy possess the gate of the enemy. Look at Abraham's natural seed, Moses. 
He possessed the gate of Egypt, that great city. He possessed the gate of the Red Sea when he come to it. He did. Look at the Hebrew children. The enemy was the fire. They possessed the gate of the fire that it couldn't burn them. Look at Daniel in the lion's den, Abraham's seed. He possessed the gate of the lion's mouth. He could not open his mouth. I believe God come down that pillar of fire and stood there between Daniel and those lions. Anyone knows that a lion is afraid of fire. And he seen that light whirling there and that lion wouldn't go to him. It was the angel of the Lord. Daniel possessed the gate of the lion's den. Why? He was the seed of Abraham. All these great warriors, we could take hours on them. Got them, many of them rode down here, I'll bypass it for time. But all these died in the faith. All went down into the ground. But there come the super seed one day, the royal seed. And he possessed the gates of death, hell, and the grave. And he brought forth after his resurrection an eternal super sign. These signs shall follow them that believe. Today it's a million more. It's a denomination. It's an organization. But Jesus said, these signs shall follow them. A super sign. God once says anything, you can never take it back. Some people say that, but just for the apostles. What did Jesus say? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. How far? All the world. How many? Every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And the conjunction, these signs shall follow them that believe in all the world and every creation, every creature. I can show you where God put gifts and power in the church. I want somebody to put your finger on the scripture and show me where he took it out. Where he took it back from the church. It's a super sign to the believer that we pass from death unto life because we feel the Holy Ghost and see it working on our lives and changing us from what we were to what we are now. Amen. He arose from the dead. Thanks be to God. Make the word super in the last day. He still lives in the seed of Abraham with a super sign. The sign that he promised Abraham, the super seed in the last days would precede the same sign. Do the same thing. Because God had to kill Christ, Emmanuel, to raise him up again, to send the Holy Ghost, an eternal one that could not die, to live in the church to produce that sign. Of all of our psychology, of all of our great teachers, of all of our theologians, there's not one living on the earth today can produce it. It takes the Holy Ghost and Him alone. Amen. Amen. So Emmanuel, the same yesterday, today, and forever, Amen. God raised Him from the dead and He's here with us after 1900 years alive. The super sign. We've got all kinds of signs. We have signs here and signs there. But God gave a super sign. Emmanuel. The seed of Abraham made flesh and dwelt among us, dies, rose again in order to redeem the church and to sanctify the church that he might live in the church and still produce his super signs to others as the ages grow on as he promised. Not a super organization, but a super sign. Oh, born of his very life, God's own life living in us, producing the same sign he did at Sodom, down there by the prophet Abraham. God has always given prophets. God gives prophets, and when he sends prophets to the people, it's usually the sign of a following judgment. Did you know that? When prophets are sent on the earth. Now, I want to take something with you just for a moment, before we go into the prayer line, the next few minutes. When God sent Noah to an intellectual age, a silly message to them, because it didn't meet with their condition of that day, but... God sent Noah as a prophet, prophesying that the end was at hand, and God let him live to see it happen. When God sent, took Israel out of Egypt, he sent Moses, a prophet, to prophesy to a scientific age of Egypt, a prophet, a sign of the oncoming judgment. Daniel was a sign to Babylon, and John was a sign to the Jews. Now, there is a super sign. Of the Holy Spirit. We know, we absolutely know that Christ still lives and reigns. He is the super one. He, you talk about a superman. The devil has something to counterfeit the very thing that God has made. 
everything that the devil's got, he made it off of something that's original. The devil cannot create. Now, you know that. If the devil's a creator, then we got two creators. The devil cannot create. He perverts what has been created. Now, look, like, a, um, what is an adultery? An adultery is the right act perverted. What is a lie? It's the truth perverted. What is sin? Unrighteousness. It's righteousness perverted. And anything the devil's got is something perverted of what God originally made. Amen. That's the reason that they were called Jesus Beelzebub, of that old fortune-telling devil out there that was a perverted spirit to a prophet. See? And that's the same thing today. They don't understand it. But if they'd read the Bible, the Bible said it was a super sign. Look at that bunch of 120 little ignorant fishermen and so forth that went in the upper room at the day of Pentecost. They come out with a super sign. There was people standing there of all nations under heaven. And here they was, didn't even know their own language, and speaking in the language of every nation under heaven. Super sign. Oh, my. We could go on and on and on. Super sign. He is the super sign. He is the last sign. And remember, the super sign in Abraham's time was what? When the God manifested himself in flesh and so showed this great manifestation of knowing what Sarah was saying in the tent. The last sign that Israel got before her rejection and called Jesus Beelzebub was when Jesus could perceive the thought that was in their heart. Jesus said that this generation would receive the same thing. That's the last. What is it? That was God with Abraham. That was God in Christ. God with Abraham. God in Christ Emmanuel. And today it's God in in his church, the super sign that God still lives. Do you believe it? Don't you never get away from it. Stay with it. It's the closing hours. It's the closing hours of the world's history. Uh, it's a little later than I thought. It's quarter after four. So i am got to stop and start praying for the sick. Super sign. I will give them an everlasting sign. I'll give them a sign that they can't destroy. And they can. For Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. No matter what you try to do to it, you'll never be able to destroy it. The only thing to do with it is believe it. And now, to this week, you lovely people, I'd be a, a miserable hypocrite to stand here before a people that loves God and try to tell them anything wrong. I'd be a deceiver. I shouldn't stand behind the desk. I shouldn't be in the company of these fine ministers. I shouldn't be in your company. I should be out with the rest of the sinners and, and hypocrites. But because that I believe this, and God has chosen that this should come forth in the last days and proved it by His Bible, that's why I'm here. I'm not here for popularity. But would I have radio programs and television have all this on televised and everything they had to beg the people for their money and things like that? I don't want that stuff. I want favor with my God. That's all. I want to be where if he sends me to where he's only five people in a church and says, stay there for six months, I'll stay right there. I have nothing to time him. That's right. If he sends me overseas to a hundred million people, I'll be right there. Some way he'll take care of it. He always has and he will. But to be honest... And sincere, and I tell you, my friends, that Christ is alive today. He is not dead. And he's an everlasting sign, as we brought through Abraham now, through the days of Jesus, and right up to here. And it is the last thing to be given to the church. Let me make a prediction. I'm not prophesying. I'm predicting. I predict that in the next few years that all organization religions will be forced to take a stand. And they will have a union of churches, and a great boycott will follow this union of churches. All denominations will be forced into it. All of them. If they don't, there will be a horrible boycott. Nearly every one of them today has not knowingly joined that World Council of Churches, selling their birthrights, Protestants, brothers, with the mother Catholic. Of Rome. They'll do that. 
You know, the Bible said that the terriers would be bound, bundled first. They're bundling. All in one great group. The Bible said they'd make an image unto the beast. I believe it'll come to pass that shortly, that if people do not join some organization, some church go in, their doors will be closed. This nation has always typed Israel. Israel, we find out, come into another land, took the occupants, slayed them, run them out, pushed them back, and occupied the land, just as we did the Indians. Then God gave them that land. God gave us this land. Notice what taking place. They had great men in them days, Joshua, a king. They had David. They had uh, Solomon, great man. But finally it worked around until they got a renegade on the platform. Yes. Ahab, a lukewarm believer. It wasn't so much Ahab, but it was that wife behind him. Yes. Yes. Jezebel, yes. of another race, of another class. Not an Israelite, she was a heathen, yes. an idol worshiper. She was the one who'd done the dirty work. She told Ahab what to do. And we have worked around in the same way. And we've had a Washington, a Lincoln, after we pushed the Indians back and took their ground. But what have we done? Through politics, we've worked the very thing in that we come over here for freedom from. It's exactly right. A Jezebel, a Herodia, and a Jacqueline. Married twice before, living with her third husband, living in there now. And yet the people go for it, blinded in their eyes. There it is. You just watch. We're going to reap what we sowed. She's at the end. I prophesied in 1956 when Billy Graham would return. And I said that Tommy Osborne would return. And America would receive her last call. Several years ago, it predicted exactly the Maginot line, exactly what would take place, exactly Kennedy would take the place of this, and there'd be a Catholic president ruling here, and what it would be, and there's just two more things left from seven things that he told me that happened perfectly. That's right, it's on old yellow paper. We're at the end time. Remember, brother, in the days of... That country back there in Israel, when she went wrong, God had someone to stand up by the name of Elijah. Hallelujah. He wasn't much thought of. We don't have no history of his life. We don't know where he come from. The only thing we know, he went to heaven in a chariot. Hallelujah. He was kind of a woodsman. He hated immoral women. Yes. He didn't fail to tell that Jezebel what she had done. Then before the coming of the Lord Jesus, there was another one coming on him with his spirit called John, also a woodsman. And he hated him or a woman. He didn't fail to tell Herod it was wrong for him to live with his brother Philip's wife. And a road he had his head cut off. Right. It's predicted again. Malachi 4, that it'll return again. There'll be a super seed rise up. Or there's got to be something stand up that's got backbone and Christian integrity. Hallelujah. Certainly, that'll take this Jezebel religion yes. that's been yes. pushed even into our Pentecostal groups. Amen. Somebody will stand with Christian spirit and fire Hallelujah. with the Holy Ghost behind it to prove that it's right. Amen. It shall be light in the evening time. Hallelujah. And he will restore the faith of the children back to the Pentecostal fathers, away from their dogmas and creeds. It's got to come. It will come. In the name of the Lord, it will come. These little weak, insignificant, so-called man achievement, let people get by and play cards and marry four or five times and be deacons in churches and things like that. It's a rotten shame in the sight of God. They call it religion of Christ. Preachers, men, women, mixed bathing out on the roads, wearing shorts, smoking cigarettes. While the backbone of the nation's broke when women act like that. Amen. Woman is the backbone of a nation. Yeah. It ain't the robin that pecks on the apple that hurts it, it's a worm at the core. Amen. I ain't scared of Russia's atomic bombs. 
No, indeed. Well, our own rottenness is what's killing us. It's a rotten to the core with immoral. Amen. Right. And you people, I've got to say this. Don't you never let anybody poke something down your back about communism. Communism is nothing. It's just a tool in God's hands. I want any Bible reader, any prophet, to stand and show me where the Bible ever says that communism will rule. It isn't communism that's going to rule, it's Romanism that's going to rule according to the Bible. Amen. Let me say this in closing. There's three great curtains today. One of them is the iron curtain. The other one is the bamboo curtain. And the other one is a purple curtain. You watch that one. That's the one's going to rule. Oh, can't you see the whole thing facing right into it? The church getting, unless they're come a falling away, the man of sin can't reveal himself. The commonness, the lukewarmness of the church, the insignificance walking around. God have mercy, said in that day, he'd send a super sign among them. He'd call them people for his namesake. You'll do it. Amen. 31 years ago, I dedicated my life and died the old William Branham and give myself a service to respect and to take the, the filth off of the name of Jesus Christ and put the word of God back in the church. I'm 31 years in the service. God helped me to live to see the day when I can see the hearts of Christians beating as one. Amen. Amen. And the filth of the women and the men and, and the churches and their creeds and things dropped away in a true, unadulterated church of the living God stands in the beauty of Christ to receive Him when He comes. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, why do I have to say such? It's off of my shoulders now, Lord. It's, it, it's into the ears of the people. I, I pray, God, that I don't think the people set here, but let them take it to somebody else. Oh, have mercy, Father God. We have talked so much of super sign today. We've brought Abraham up to show the faith that he had. Let the power of God now, Lord, rule in the lives of the people. Let the Holy Spirit come gently, sweetly to every believer. Cuddle him into his arms. Tell him, don't fear, little one. It's just down the road. Just a little further. And the great masterpiece will come. The Christ of God. The super sign that raised up from the dead and is alive forevermore living among us in the form of the Holy Spirit, saying, that day you'll know that I am in the Father, the Father in me, I in you and you in me, then God in his people, manifesting himself. God, may there not be any here this afternoon dull enough to miss that. May the Spirit quicken the things to them. Here's handkerchiefs laying here for the sick and afflicted. I think what if this handkerchief is going to my little boy? What if it's going to my wife or my precious old daddy was living, it was going to him, my mother. Oh, I want somebody to be sincere. And God, with all the sincerity I know to have, I, I, I ask to heal every one of them. God, granted, we're taught in the Bible that they took off of Paul handkerchiefs or aprons. Now, we realize that Paul doesn't live amongst mortals no more. He's immortal. Paul has gone on, but Jesus remains here. He's the same God. And the people who had faith in Paul, knowing that you were in his body, that it was you, not Paul. He died daily so you could live in him. And now, Father, they realize the same thing, and that's why they bring handkerchiefs and aprons to us. You remain the same God. Give them the same blessings, Father. I ask it in Jesus' name. And now, Lord, I'm going to pray for your sick children now. I pray that you help me. May the Holy Ghost so anoint me this afternoon, not only me, but every minister, every person in here, that there will not be one feeble person among us when the service is over. Grant it, Lord. Now, with our heads bowed, before we call the prayer line, I wonder if there's any here who's kind of sin sick. You went to the church because it had a great big bell on it, because the mayor of the city belonged there, or some famous doctor of 
divinity. I have nothing evil to say against that. Jesus didn't condemn those Pharisees. He just said, you're blind, leading the blind. He said, you can pass seeds to make one proselyte. And when you get him, you make him twofold child more hell than he was when he started. That's about right. Remember, you have to bypass the truth to receive an error. Believe the word. He that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Will you receive Christ this afternoon just for raising your hand and saying, Brother Branham, I, I will, right here in my seat. I won't come up to the altar. Or I I'll believe him right here. And from this day on, I promise I'll serve Christ. I'll go to one of these churches and be baptized. I will seek until the Holy Ghost fills my body, fills my soul, gives me eternal life. I'll believe what you've taught has been the truth. Now just pray for me, Brother Branham, to make up my mind, to let this be the hour. Right in my seat, I'll raise up my hand. How many will there be? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. That's good. I, I'm not going to call you up here. Just write in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I, I truly believe right now. All right. Just keep believing I truly believe, Lord Jesus. Somebody else in the balcony now. I'm just waiting a moment. This is more, more than praying for the sick friends. God bless you. I see your hand back there, son. God bless you, sir. No doubt, but what a good man like that's done many good things in his life. That's the greatest thing you've ever done, brother. Remember, just as you raise your hand in sincerity, that quick he took you. He that heareth my words and believeth on him and sent me hath present tense everlasting life and shall never come to the judgment. You'll never go through the tribulation, never come into judgment, but you pass from death unto life. How beautiful. Will you raise your hand, someone else? God bless you, sister. God bless you, sister. God bless you, sister. And God bless you. Both you girls or little boy. God bless you. God bless this lady here. God bless you, my sister. Mean it now. He'll take you right where you are. Now remember, altar call is wonderful. But in the Bible, they never had an altar call. The people believed. As many as was believed was added to the church. You just believe right where you are that you're passing right now from death unto life. There's another one I'm waiting for so bad. God bless you back there. Good. God bless you. There's, there's someone, I just know I'm looking right over my seat. You say, you mean that, Brother Branham? I mean it. Won't you receive Christ speaking to you now saying, this is the time. This is the hour you've always wanted to. Won't you receive him now as your Savior? Right here, I make my decision. I tell my time. Right now, I'm raising up my hands and saying, Lord, I now want to pass from death unto life. I want to be a new creature. I want to have something in my life that I know that's brought me above the cares of the world. I want to know that I'm a living. I can't afford to take the chance. I might, my life might be stepped out right now. It might go yet today, and I will have to meet you. But if you're not sure of it, won't you raise your hand while we pray? Granted, God. Amen. It's fine. Good. That's it. Yes, I'm glad, my precious sister, that you understood that. Our Heavenly Father, it's all in your hand now. There's where the light was hanging. And it's out. Now it's gone. I have did the best that I know how, Father. And now, as the trophies of this meeting, I give you every one of them, Father, the trophies of the message, and may you, their love gifts from God to His Son, Jesus Christ. And no man can come to me except my Father draws him, and all that the Father has given me will come to me, and I will raise him up at the last day. You promised it, Christ. I claim it for them. I claim your word for them. Standing here as a minister, uh, uh, a priest between the living and dead. And now I'm doing just what you said, taking what you said in your word. You said, St. John 5, 24, Lord, for it was written. You said, he that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has 
everlasting life. You promised it now, and they raised their hands that they believed it, and they accepted it. Now they're yours. I commit them to you. Lead them, Father, all through life's journey. And then, and finally, in the end, when the rapture comes, may they go in that rapture. I may never shake their hand here, but Lord, let us live neighbors to one another on the other side. Granted, through Jesus Christ's name, amen. And you feel scoured out. Just the Holy Spirit does something for us when we preach. There's one person that I always wanted to be like. That was Jesus. Do you know the song? Brother David wrote it. From Bethlehem's manger came forth a stranger on earth I long to be like him all through life's journey from earth to glory i only ask to be like him that's all we're gonna try to sing it to be like like children. Mm. That's my desire. When I was a little boy, I read Edgar Rice Boers, Tars of the Apes. I cut Mother's fur rug up to impersonate Tarzan. When I read The Lone Star Ranger, I rode a hobby horse everywhere I went. But one day I picked up the Bible. Since then, my desire is to be like him. God, let me. Let his life so close to me. May I clean myself away. Professing to be dead for 31 years now. That Jesus might reflect himself. The only way I know he can do it is by his word. Just to be like Jesus. Oh, yes, just to be like, like Jesus. On earth I long to be like As this beautiful song is being carded, just to be like Jesus, can I die dead enough? Can I get myself enough out of the way? The unworthiness of, there's none of us worthy, Lord, to be like you, but you said it would be, then it's your promise. Cleanse us, Lord. Take out all the doubts. We want to be like Jesus. Our lives, we want His Spirit to live in us. What would He do standing here this afternoon with the purchase of His blood after His death, burial, and resurrection? God grant it once more, will you? 
help this poor hungry heart of mine hungering for brotherly love sisterly love with decency and honor as Christian as sons and daughters of the master what type of person ought we to be granted through Jesus name once more Lord please If he was standing here, what would he do? Oh, if we can just yield ourselves. He promised, a little while in the world won't see me no more. Yet you'll see me. If I had just do it again, I want him to go to pray for you. That you'd know that it wasn't me. His, his word said here, these signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Just let it be once more. If you just let his spirit come in now before we start this meeting. Being preaching rough like this, it's hard. But pray for me. You pray. You pray, Lord, let, let me be able to touch your garment today. Turn, Lord, your servant, Brother Branham, let him speak to me like he did, like you did the woman at the well. I know it ain't Brother Branham. He has to get out of the way. But if you just take his body and use it, I know it's you. After all this five days of hard teaching on it, scripture by scripture and the promises, I'll believe it. Would you do it? Thank you. By his grace and by his help. The angel of the Lord, whose picture you see back there, when I meet you again at the river, or just beyond, before we go up, remember, he's not standing two feet from where I am right now. That's exactly the truth. Now I take every spirit in here under the control of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask you to believe what I've taught to be the truth, if it's God's word. If it ain't the word, don't believe it. If it is the word, it's the word. God will confirm his word. Just to have a little, little people out there so that the anointing can come in, we're going to call every person. Billy says he's 500 prayer cards out in here. I'm going to pray for every one of them. What do I want you to see that it's him. A little Catholic lady come down here to Santa. All these saint names around here, I get them all mixed up. Where was we at last? Santa Maria. She walked up there and she had a beads in her hand. She said, Father, I said, Brother, she said, I know God is with you. If you just lay your hands on me, I'll get well. That was all she needed. I think of that little Mexican woman that night down there in Mexico with that little dead baby. You heard the stories in the businessman. Stand there preaching, crying the second night. Billy comes to me and said, Daddy, I've got better than 600 ushers standing right there. They can't keep a little woman. Her baby died this morning at 9 o'clock. A little Mexican woman is in Mexico City. It said, it's rained all day and they're standing right there, thousands leaning. No place to sit down, standing up. And the brother gave the cards out. Uh, he was so slow. I called him manana. Uh, Mexico means tomorrow. He's always so late. He come and got me at 9 o'clock. Now I got over there and Billy said, I, that, that woman's got that dead baby out there, Daddy. And I, we can't hold her and said, Manana's going to give out all the cards. said, I, I can't get her in that prayer line without a card to call some of the rest of them. I said, well, I said, Brother Moore, how many knows Brother Jack Moore? Many of you, of you. I said, Brother Moore, go pray for her, baby. She wouldn't know me anyhow. They let me down a wall on the ladder to the platform. I said, she wouldn't know me. There's a big green. Brother Espinosa, you know him here on the West Coast? Brother Espinosa? Any of you know Brother Espinosa, the Mexican? Yes, yeah, sure, man. Sure. He was standing right there interpreting for me. And I started, I said, as I was saying, faith is the substance of things. And I looked and standing right before me was a little Mexican baby. It didn't have teeth. It was laughing. I looked around and I seen Brother Moore going to pray for the, the lady 
She would run over those ushers' legs, upset them, climb up over their shoulders, this dead baby wrapped in a blanket. So I seen that, I said, wait a minute, Brother Moore. Tell the ushers to break away and let the lady come up. I didn't know it was the baby. I just thought, I put my hand up on the wet blanket. She run up first and she grabbed out one of those beads and began to holler and padra, father, you know, and I said, don't do that. So I just prayed for the baby. I said, Lord Jesus, I seen a vision of a little baby. I don't know where it's that one. I said, I'll lay my hands upon this wet blanket. And it begins kicking and screaming to come to line. I said, Brother Espinosa, chase that down. Don't, don't say it until the doctor signs the statement that the baby died. He chased it down. It died that morning at 9 o'clock. It's 11 o'clock at night. Come to life. Then the papers come out and everything. Then they give me an interview with the Catholic Church. And they asked me if they thought their saints could do the same thing. I said, if they're living. He said, well, they can't be a saint until they're dead. I said, well, find that in the scripture for me. So he still lives. Amen. He's still here. Pray now. Just touch the border of his garment. Let me give you a scripture now. He's a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Amen. The same yesterday and forever. I claim that he's the high priest right here. He's the invisible high priest. Can only do or intercede for you when you confess that he has done it. Now you touch him. Touch any of us would make no difference. But touch him and he'll work through his spirit. I believe that I have his spirit. You touch and see if it's right or not. Touch him. Just pray. In the balcony. Some of you people in the balcony think because oh, you're that far back. You're not out of reach of him. He's everywhere. Omnipresent. Do you believe that? Omnipresent. Do you believe that? Amen. Knows everything. Ever present. Omnipotent. All powerful. Yes. Infinite. Amen. Hallelujah. That's my God. Here's an elderly lady sitting right on the end. She'd been praying there for a few minutes. I thought I'd seen it standing by her. She got trouble with her head. You believe? That's right, raise up your hand. It's left you now. Your faith heals you. Now you want to question her? What was it? She never touched me. Look how far she is from me. But the eye that seen said, I seen you when you were under the fig tree. He still lives today. Amen. That's a super sign. Amen. And he's still here. Just believe. There's a lady sitting back right here. She's weeping. She's praying. She's suffering with a nervous stomach. She just believed with all of her heart. God will heal her. Don't miss it, sister. Mrs. Snowden, have faith. I hate to have to call her name. We're strangers to one another. I've never seen a woman in my life. Was them your conditions and so forth always said, wave your hand back and forth if that's right. If we're strangers one to another and I don't know you, wave your hands again. <laughs> now what is it? Just to be like our Lord Jesus on earth. I just long to be like him. Don't you want to be like that? Somebody over here? woman keeps the horse here. Eye trouble. Miss Craig, I don't know you, but you're sitting there praying for her. If we're strangers, wave your hand back and forth this way so that people will see. You're near the kingdom now. Just have faith and believe. Little lady sitting here, so marvelous to her, she shook her head looking around. Not she didn't doubt it, she that believes it. And because you have believed, look on me and believe me. 
You're praying for a boy. That's right. A mental case. You believe? Don't you doubt. You'll come home. A lady right behind her, young woman suffering with complications, weak back, nervousness. Mrs. Patchett. Believe with all your heart, Mrs. Patchett. I'm a stranger to you, but that's true. If that's true, wave your hand. It's left you now. There's a dark shadow over you, and it's been gone. What about the balcony? Does somebody believe? You believe it in he's the same? I see a woman. She don't even realize she's got that faith. It's a hidden faith. She don't even confess it. She's suffering with a headache. She's sitting here looking at me. Right up here. A Mrs. Singer. Surprised you didn't. Your headaches is going to leave you now. now. You tell your critics to answer that. You believe him? That's the same once more, Trim. To, to be like Jesus. Lord, that's my desire. Just to humble ourselves. Look at these people, these women, these men. Many of them this afternoon across this rolls and around. Same faith that that little woman had years ago. The same Jesus representing himself. The super sign in the last days. As it was the last days for Israel then. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. You believe that? How many of you love your pastors? Raise up your hand. Sure you do. I love them too. They're men of God. I know they suffer themselves. I, I know they're pastors. God knows all about it. They're willing to give themselves. Let me show you. That man with his handkerchief up to his face just then, he's been suffering trouble with his nose, comes back and forth, goes on. That's right. He knows all your troubles. He ain't a thing but what he knows. I challenge the unbeliever. <laughs> if you think it's wrong, come here and do the same thing. I know what's wrong with that woman sitting there. I can't call her. Because if she just had more faith, that hip would get all right. <laughs> Sure. This woman sitting in that chair there, that cop. I know her trouble. But what good does it do to call her? See, I'd say there, you say, sure, look, she's crippled. How about these people that don't look crippled? There's a miracle. That woman's the arthritis laying there. Takes faith. Why did you doubt, sister? Why didn't you keep on believing? You once believed it. You let somebody talk to you. Now you know that's right. I pray that your faith will never fail no more. You try to hide yourself right now and see if you can do it. I can call three critics in here for the name right now too. But it hurts some feelings. Oh, we're not playing church. This is God, not me, Him. His presence is here. You believe it? Now while His Spirit here anoint me, if you believe it to be God, I want to stand up these prayer cards and pray for you. You come to here, you don't come to me. If you come to me, you're going to lose. You come when you come by here like you're coming to the cross. I'm going to ask these godly pastors to stand here with me. I'm going to stand with them at the judgment bar. They may not be able to have discernment. That's just given, you know. But they are a man of God, saved as well as I'm saved, called to their ministry. There's five gifts in the ministerial body. First is apostles, 
prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists. That's God's Amen. predestinated God has set in the church. Gifts. Brother, will you stand with me? Let that section, all that's got prayer cards, stand out in the aisle. Stand up. Let this middle section that's got prayer cards stand up. Let the first section come across this way. Is there a way to bring them or shall we come down front? Uh, well, I can't. I, I want them to come. Uh, let's see. Maybe we'd better get down there. Can you set this microphone down there? I like to get in with the people and they tell them.
this old song now. I can, I will, I do. your hand on somebody by you while we sing that again. Each one of you joining, let's join hands one with another. Like that. All right. I can and I will and I, I do. do. 